In the last video, I mentioned that I wondered what might have happened to my YouTube channel if Chernobyl never exploded. A few people commented I might have become that Fukushima guy or that windscale guy. But what if this was actually the case? What if Chernobyl hadn't exploded that night? How would the world have changed from where it is today? The more I thought about this subject, the more interesting it became. So, let's assume that when Toptonov went to press AZ-5, the control rods were in just the right positions to safely shut down, and everything went smoothly. Chernobyl Unit 4 enters an offline state following what surviving data has shown was a successful turbine rundown, which would make it the first nuclear power plant in the country to actually do it. Yes, the turbine rundown was completely unnecessary, and Chernobyl was the only nuclear power plant actually doing it. This would of course mean Unit 3 would adopt the rundown with some modifications to their turbine, and life would continue as normal for the other workers. Chernobyl Unit 4 would also receive a pretty significant safety upgrade shortly after this shutdown, with the shortened control rods that insert from the bottom of the reactor added to the AZ system. They previously were not part of it due to voltage differences between them and the top control rods. It is now believed that, if these control rods were part of the AZ system, enough boron would have been present in the bottom of the reactor to stop the explosion, meaning that this addition would prevent Unit 4 from ever exploding. This brings us on to a similar subject. Would another nuclear power plant explode? Many people seem to think so both in my comments and around the internet. But I disagree, for a couple reasons. First and foremost, RBM Cades were all receiving, or had received, this special upgrade to insert the shortened control rods into the core. In other words, Chernobyl Reactor 4 was virtually the only reactor that could explode, and it is pure misfortune it fell down the path to destruction. Secondly, the conditions that brought Chernobyl to catastrophe weren't just ordinary. Many, many things needed to come together, including a low control rod insertion, high coolant temperature, the abnormally low power. With no reactors doing the rundown system, there was very, very little chance another RBMK would explode. It would also be quite boring for this video, as another reactor exploding would change very little in the grand scheme. As for the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, reactors 5 and 6 would eventually be completed, making it one of the largest nuclear power plants in the world. As was mentioned in the past by Brukhanov, another 6 nuclear power plants would have been built on the other side of the Pripyat River, possibly of the MKER type, and also includes a pressure vessel surrounding it which will probably satisfy many people. Unfortunately for the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, its title as the largest of its kind in the world was destined to be short-lived regardless of the disaster. Both Fomin and Brukhanov had more or less agreed that they could barely maintain control of just the four units, and were ready to transfer units 5 and 6 to a separate administration when they were complete effectively making them a completely different nuclear power plant altogether. The six more would, of course, share this fate too. The 12 reactors would become a cluster of stations in an energy cluster around the Pripyat marshes. Speaking of Pripyat, its current fate would of course not be shared by the young city. Pripyat found itself in a unique position as a closed city now opening up with many amenities that made the city better than others. And the plans for Pripyat for when Units 5 and 6 were completed alone show a major expansion in sports and leisure. Instead of suffering the fate of near-permanent abandonment, Pripyat would have likely become a hot spot for tourists who would enjoy the pleasant summers of the local area and the unique connection to the Republic's capital Kiev by hydrofoil. The entire region would have become a local economic powerhouse in the electrical, industrial and tourism sectors. Alas, this was not to be. Zooming out further still to the Soviet Union, 
I don't think saving Chernobyl would have saved the Soviet Union, despite what Gorbachev said on the subject. Geopolitical experts in the Soviet Union already knew collapse was inevitable, and were actually impressed by how long it managed to survive even with the nuclear disaster. But avoiding the Chernobyl disaster would not stop the oil price crash that severely damaged the Soviet economy. Although its effects would be less severe, due to not having to spend all that money on the liquidation. Construction of nuclear power plants throughout the nation would continue, such as at Ignalina, Kostroma, Kursk and Smolensk, and accelerated planning of other nuclear power plants throughout the country. What cannot be understated is the social effects of the Chernobyl disaster on public relations in the USSR, especially in Ukraine. The disaster irreversibly damaged Ukrainian-Soviet relations and led to a significant uptake in the nationalist movement there. Again, I don't see the Soviet Union surviving much longer, but I do see it being more of a fizzle-out than the explosive tale of coups we saw in reality. And this fizzle-out would spare the Soviet Union of its nationalist divides that we see today. Most likely with closer cooperation between the former Soviet states, especially due to how expensive RBMK reactors were to maintain, there would likely be fewer conflicts in the region. Chechnya would probably still exist as a satellite state of Russia, and the ongoing Ukrainian conflict would likely not take place, as it too would be closely aligned with Russia. That being said, a Soviet Union that fizzled out and didn't have to contend with the economic catastrophe that was Chernobyl, would have likely been more successful in the process of perestroika and democratisatia, than therefore spared from the dramatic economic turmoil of the 90s, would also be likely supported by the West. This would mean it would likely be without the hardline government it has today, in closer cooperation with the European Union. Would the Russians have joined the EU or forged their own path? It's hard to say, but economically, I feel they would have been inclined to be for one simple reason. If we move beyond the borders of the USSR, we see a world shaped entirely differently without Chernobyl, as a source of what has become a significant anti-nuclear movement. Chernobyl has been defining both in the field of energy production and in green policies. Take Germany, for example which, following Chernobyl, has embarked on a strong anti-nuclear movement, continuing all the way into the 2020s, with the closure of all their nuclear power plants and the bulk of the energy supply replaced with coal and other fossil fuel sources. Without Chernobyl, it's hard to see how the anti-nuclear movement could ever gain traction until 2011, as not blowing up Chernobyl will not stop the Fukushima disaster. And if anything, it might have made it worse. Chernobyl was, of course, instrumental in strengthening a positive safety culture throughout the nuclear industry, and so we would expect to see a booming nuclear industry, but with more frequent minor accidents. Nothing compared to Three Mile Island or Chernobyl, though, thankfully. The consequences of this globally are in it positive. Cheaper electrical production in the long run, fewer emissions meaning the world is a bit more breathable, and a push for more early development of things like electric cars and buses. The Great Recession still befalls the world, but with the benefits of more nuclear power, and hence cheaper electricity, the world would recover more rapidly, as GDP can be spent on other things. This has major impacts on economies dependent on oil and gas, so the Middle East and Russia would face economic hardships if they weren't quick enough to adapt. But the world without Chernobyl would likely face two major nuclear crises. A bitter Fukushima, with TEPCO as, if not more, sluggish to respond than they were in our timeline. And then the ultimate culmination of poor safety culture. The use of nuclear materials for malicious purposes. Dirty bombs, bombs laced with nuclear materials that would be dispersed in the explosion, are much more likely to become the weapons of choice simply through a poorer safety culture. And I want to end on a couple people. Toptonov, the man who, in this scenario, 
is spared from being largely held accountable for the events that befell Unit 4, and will go on to have an incredible career. At the young age of 25, he was already a prodigy, and probably would have gone on to become a leading figure in the nuclear industry, like Boris Stoyachuk, his colleague, has become today. And Anatoly Dyatlov, the man who has become scapegoated for this disaster, would eventually retire from the industry that had already claimed so much from him, to live a long and healthy life with his wife, children and grandchildren. Chernobyl was such a huge moment in history, changing the fate of many countries and people around the world. Perhaps a world without this disaster would be better than ours, but perhaps in the long term, the world would be destined for dark times. What is important is learning from our mistakes, and hopefully the next time, we will avoid another Chernobyl.